key thing really is that you are a global player. You have no choice. You've got to fight on a global basis. So you look at what the global trend tells you, and of course you'll find that over the last few three months, I think I begin to see U.S. becoming more and more concerned about the rise of China. Okay, now, I don't like to talk politics, but in strategy, politics is very much part of strategy. Especially, you know, they talk about the Chishita, you talk about the XCI, and, right? So, and I explained to you that some of the, some of the things that are of concern, really real, I, I, I myself personally very concerned, because the U.S. is fighting to stay as number one in technology. Now, where are my evidence uh, for saying this, right? First, you'll find that there are now proposals in the U.S. It sh shouldn't have happened at all, you know. Right? And of course, I think the U.S. have gone too far down that road to do any reversal. In other words, they are all stuck inside already, you know. It's, they, they cannot pull out anymore, right? They propose the U.S. to disallow person born in Asia. There are a lot of Chinese Americans who are from mainland China. And they want to disallow these people to work in the U.S on technological or science position, even if the American citizen. Okay, I mean, this is, I, I saw press, I couldn't believe it. And I thought this is a great concern because your employment of engineers, top brains, will be severely limited. And of course, especially in America, when they extend these laws to U.S. operating outside U.S., then I think they will lose a lot of good talent, right? So this is a major concern. Then number two, all right, well, of course the key really is that knowledge comes from people. Now I'll explain the, lo the, the global, the, the, the cultural issue later on. But yet you find that globally scientific knowledge is now increasingly available, including the primary data through online publishing, rather than to peer-reviewed journals, meaning to say knowledge is easily accessible. And of course, right, and MIT Lab is producing, uh, and I tell my students, right, this is going to be a huge market because MIT Lab is going to create a computer, uh, a notebook using hand cranking electrical supply for the Indian market. But essentially, once that is available, right, low cost, but tough, you see. You know, when you go to India, right, you want to use a computer, you just something to survive there for for more than a month, right, because of the dust or the dirt, you need something that's hardy, like military issue supply, you know. But U.S. has got that going. Then once that is so, that I think the market is huge. That means knowledge is virtually free. Google is going to go on 10 years down the line, right, they're going to put every book in Oxford, right, uh, Borderland Library, where they have a whole collection of all the books in the world, into the internet. So I think it's a bit too late for U.S. to do any reversal of this. Right? But this is a major concern of the U.S. That, and precisely you also note the other thing very important. And this is where I was lecturing way back in the 1980s. Now my first lecture was actually to a U.S. company, 1977. I was lecturing to uh, Caterpillar on discipline. Right? So U.S. company, of, of my concern, they are fair, they are fair play. You know, but they forgot one thing very importantly is that, right, although U.S. stands for capitalism, right, China did not open up, right, in order to have human rights, democracy, and so and so. They opened up precisely because they want to catch up on technology. Evidence of that, look at the political proceedings. Right, so this is very important because technology is key to survival. So survival is very important. Survival of the people. This is my ground bit. My major opponent, right, is a Korean guy who wrote the book Blue Water Strategy. If you otherwise it's not applicable at all, although he's a Korean. I think so. I think I mean the name mix up. But I remember clearly about inside the fact of anti other war. But the real reason why I try to open up is to catch up on technology. So technology is very important for them. They're not likely to right, care what else the world does. They want to be number one in technology. And of course, the China is countering that already, the way I observe. You know, I'm, I'm, okay, now how do I all this deduction? I will, I will quote you a Nobel Prize winner, right? That my analysis is founded on very good theory. Right? Why do, do I draw this deduction? 
Firstly, right, China put a lot of emphasis on the space program because they realized America became number one in technology, mainly because they wanted to catch up with the Russians. Kennedy is saying, look, Russian put men on space. We must not be outdone by them. We have to catch up. We have so they had a lot of steel army fight from the NASA program, the technology downwards. The Chinese knew that already. So I think man on moon, mission to Mars is in the program. Although they will not say, although they will not they will deny, they are very secretive society because space, space for China is very important. They will not announce and then they don't achieve it. It will be loss of faith, complete loss of faith. And in China, once you lose faith, you cannot survive in a society. Right? Then, of course, they are actually test free of the university sector, which I think is a very smart strategy. Right? Supposing that happens, supposing there's a blockage, they put there's a limit on, you know, access to tech for universities by foreigners. We bring the foreigners to China. Right? So, Rockingham is setting up, and it's what I call, a freehand sort of approach. They didn't want to, you know, right, control that tightly. So Nottingham experiment is very interesting. I'm watching it. It's a recent thing. Then of course you find that, right, in my interactions with Xiao Hong Ta, Xie Pei Ta, and Tsinghua, the professor, they are going to recruit top academics, U.S. academic or top faculty position in China. That's also another smart move. Because money you can earn back. Money is not a big issue. Technology is. That's the key to survival. Right. Then, of course, you find that right, China is also leading right, to wrest the control of the internet to the US. Right. Of course, you know, the ICANN tool of, is a tool of the US. That's how the political government sees it. So the internet, of course, is a very fantastic tool of the 21st century. Because the internet, one day you will know when you send an email, where you send it, who send it. They're all in place. Right? Matter of getting a thing put together. Right. So and also internet will by a keystroke, they can even tell is it real or is it fake? Or well, now they use voice, you know, Hannah spy plane, they will, they use voice, generally identify, but next time the way you type a keystroke they know. The moment because you have, human beings are habit show people with you have habits and so your keystroke, the momentum the ah they will know. Then, of course, internet, the key to global dominance, yes. right? Because Sun Tzu says, chapter 13, right? Sun Tzu says that, uh, right, in chapter 13, right? Of course, you find all the other world books. I, I, I love other world books. I collect them, right? The latest I'm reading, Indian Out of War, that is written about the same period. Right? Very important, Sun Tzu says, is chapter 13 on spies. But you must realize one thing, you cannot read a book. Now, so let me, let me here say that I introduce Sun Tzu to explain to you what Sun Tzu, other war and, and, and all that. I've given uh, the uh, original version of the other war in an edited form, 5,000 words. It's only 5,000 Chinese characters. But they use Chinese characters and we are expression of the Chun Chu period. Right? In other words, warring state period, Chinese, real expression. And of course, right, you must realize that other war Sun Tzu is not, don't mistake it because you see so many other versions of it in the market. Right? In the past, it is supposed to be a secret document because the Chinese prize knowledge above money. Right? Here in our society, knowledge is converted to money. Bestseller, you write, you publish, and you that is entire Chinese approach, historically. So, in the past, what they do is, right, they will give this, this uh, 13 chapters right, to emperors, rulers, in order to build good relationship, because these things are not widely available. They're secret documents, actually. Right. And 5,000, all right, of course, there's nobody pushing it. There's nobody publishing it. There's nobody money out of it. The fact that it survived 2,500 years means that it has to have some core value in it. Now, I don't come from the Chinese school stream. I come from the Western school. So I, from Raffles, went to, did my degree in Ryan and MBA in City University, PhD in St. Andrews, and Barrister and Law, and I'm a chartered accountant. Okay, so I, my, my training background had always been English Western background. 
until I did my PhD in strategy. And I studied top ASEAN company. I surveyed 500 top ASEAN public listed companies. I wanted to find out what the strategy was like. So in the process, I wrote a book. Right? And of course, we didn't bother to, to, to cite some support at all. And I was very proud of it because it's 600 pages. And I used to work for a German firm called Klopner Industrial Alive. And a German Humboldt uh, believe in PhD is that you, to get a real PhD, you've got to publish as a book. So although I had a PhD, all right, because I, I used to work in Germany, I, I used to live in, for some time in Dusseldorf and Duisburg, right, I had the German influence in me. So I said, okay, let's get into a book. Right, then my brother, my, see, my, my father got three sons. And of course, elders, he, he, he sees that I have lost, he had lost me to the English civilization. You know, what a waste. But the younger son, no, he got to study Chinese. So my brother took it up. My brother is a PhD in engineering from Strathclyde, UK, right? And I was saying, this is what we do for a PhD. All these things, ah, so the Supreme Court, this thing book, right? It was said, all that you have said. Now, that is a real shock to me. You know, I mean, I had a lot of pride in PhD and getting a doctorate and all that. And here is my brother challenging and saying, what I've done is nothing. But somebody had discovered this principle 2,000 Years. That's why I took the book, I started to read it, I took all the translations, and I realized, yeah, the only thing is you must read it metaphorically. In other words, you must use metaphor. You cannot read literally, because there is no CEO in other world. There is no worker in other world. You've got to read the soldier as the worker, general as the CEO, maybe the king as the chairman of the board, you know. So you've got to have your metaphors there. Of course, I was convinced after I got And then this co-authored work, I, I did it with Peter Greenia, very well known authority on other work, on strategy, probably top academic journals. And I told him that. He loved it, he was playing golf. After a golf game, <laughs> Chica, are you drunk? No, but how can that be? So I sent him a copy. Six months later, he phoned by and said, you must cite it. Because definitely it is all that. Right, so that's how the book was chosen in Oxford, right? In, uh, Blackwell, Oxford, you know, right in front of it. was chosen at the book of the month in Spring Choice because we have all the evidence to show that the company in ASEAN succeeded because they followed the other war principles. That's how I got myself into this other war game. Right? It didn't come from me believing it. You know, it, it, I, I complete all my Western history until at that point I realized that there is really something in our world. Then I realized, okay, right, the Americans are too also into very nice interested in it. Not before the Vietnam War, I'm sure of that. Right? Before the Vietnam War they, they don't think much of even even Chiang Kai shek didn't think much of Sun Tzu. They thought all is outdated. Chiang Kai shek could know Mandarin, you know. Right? Until they lost the war to Vietnam. Then they start to analyze and they realize. Now, of course, other war is, you know, you read uh, 13 days in Hollywood movie, they mention other war. As though it is the thing to be in, you know. <laughs> right, but when you read Iraq, well, I was told, right, every soldier carrying them a copy out. It's over, 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 overdoing it, in a way. Good. So, chapter 13 of Out of War mentioned Infomatrix. So, Infomatrix is going to, as soon as it says that, right, Information is priceless. Right. I never find any book on strategy written after Sun Tzu, right, in the Western sphere that actually put a lot of emphasis on information. And you see, the most important thing is that you must, very importantly, don't rely on soothsayers. You know, Chinese believe in fortune telling and the forecasting of it. No. The only information that is reliable, spy. And can you say that five types of spies? Yeah, so, so you read that chapter, you must realize that it's written 2,500 years ago. But his emphasis on information is not wrong. And he tells the guy who knows how to value information is really the wise person, really wise. And now, of course, the stock market, you know, share. You know, I might be MBA in finance, so efficient market hypothesis, you know, inside, inside the trade, you make money. Information is the key. Right now, so knowledge in China is price above money. This is very important for you to remember. More important is that 
that other corporation, why did I quote that? Not, not for fun or learning, because technically the most knowledge driven organization is the technology corporation. So I will do after this a very important uh, explanation why China would be number one, no matter what we do. It is in the force of history. Right? Of course, I'm open to debate. Right? Then, of course, winning product must be based on new knowledge. And, of course, you know, rightly, because human beings like, like to show off, you know, right? they like also the product to be sexy. Right? Even Sony will become sorry right? if they don't have the product. So, possible trend, I think, in the future will companies will start to publish key papers in this area. The leading companies like Huawei, and they will begin to realize, really, why don't we be a publisher? Because when the scholars write a piece of paper, they transfer right to the publisher. And we get the, the most important, when we're in the draft, when we're in draft form, we get the key idea form. Okay, I myself, my research, I'm going to Hyderabad, the second IT city of India, where right? I'm presenting a paper on uh, IT and, and global justice. I'm trying to create artificial jobs. So I'm very much in IT too, myself. Right? So I, I value this sort of uh, thinking. Then number two, corporate faculty and university. So in the future, I may be listening to you, one of you lecturing on technology strategy. There you go. The Cisco professor, you know, strategy. It's inevitable because that is going to be the key for survival. Having the right concept, having the right model, right business model in evolving, changing environment. Don't forget, technology changes business model. It's not up to you to decide. But if you don't have the right model, you're dead. <coughs> you're finished. And the model is grounded on information communication. Then you have these corporate research centers. That's just you. Right, why wait for professors to write paper? We start doing our own fundamental research. Right. Uh, this question came up in India. Uh, they asked us to create a research center. Research. You have a journal of your own. No, no, but we said we would not create a research center and we cited the fact that you all packed out just shot it there. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm not arguing with you, but there is yeah. a little bit of a trend not yeah. to create. The time is not yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not so key yet. Yeah. You know, I mean, you are, you, still knowledge is equal to money, so it's not a problem. You found a patent, the patent owner, intellectual property rights. If you look at the patent chart, oh, it's all Western world that owns it, you know. But when the Chinese and Indian and Haitians start to issue a lot of paper of their own, I think that is going to change. There is no system that is permanent. Everything changes. The only thing you will favor the system that suits you best, right? So this corporate research, and I'm not telling, I'm not saying, I'm saying this whereby you can actually pay somebody to do fundamental research, and if Cisco or Thai University maybe to issue a degree, a PhD. Right? Why is so important? Because the product life cycle is so short. Right, and the waste is, you know, becoming so survival, right? It's a thing that will drive people to do what they, they thought would not be the thing to do. Then, of course, right, now very interestingly, right, during the last three months, I mean, that's very interesting to you, and you should, you should be aware of that, is that right, the Nobel Prize for Economics has been awarded to Thomas Schlesling for his strategy of conflict. All right, this book is very important to get. Right. It discusses situation where two fight each other, different different scenario. Right. And of course, you know, Cisco and Huawei is one that, so if you want one book to read, I will say that this classic is useful to read. They've been awarded Nobel Prize for his work. Right. Old book. Right. And then Ockman, Robert Ockman for his insight. This one tells you why corporate intelligence is so important. Because his research shows that how one acts reveals what one knows. What you plan to do, what you product you all the thinking, right? What, how you act reveals your level of technical knowledge. Okay? And of course you will find that uh, major technological global corporate have to consider in only long-term strategy this underlying conflict scenario, rising China, declining U.S. Right? Of course, I'll explain why U.S. is declining. Right? And politics, technology, and business are interconnected in this modern world. Then, of course, you'll find that uh, right, 
and of course this in the future you will have a situation of China versus US rest of the world and who are the allies these are very important and US you look at Iraq war right the major ally always there is UK right but other issues right US can't afford to keep eliminating 